knowing your purpose informs every decision that you make going forward. And your purpose is simply how you will leverage your talents, expertise, and your passion in service of other people and our planet. Hi, I'm Deirdre Breckenridge. I've spent my entire career helping women to get unstuck, to share their stories, nurture relationships, and to grow their brands. But most of all, to find their voices so they can make a difference. Women Worldwide features the stories of passionate women and the ups and downs of their journeys. With deep insight and advice, let Women Worldwide ignite your passion so you can excel in life. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you for joining us and for being dedicated listeners and watchers every single week. And before I dive into the topic and special guest today, just wanna to give you a couple Women Worldwide updates. So I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago, I reported that San Francisco was in the lead and had our largest US listener base well, that has changed. New York is now number one. <laughs> so just wow. a shout out, yeah, to New York and our <laughs> listeners. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone, everywhere you are in the world. Now, speaking of New York, I also wanted to share, do you remember Dolores Hirschman? Well, Dolores interviewed me for the 200th episode of Women Worldwide. And Dolores and I were teaming up to give a workshop in New York in October, October 3rd and 4th. It's called Turn Up the Volume. So if you want to raise the level of your speaking and media appearances and interviews, then this is a workshop for you. You can go to womenworldwideshow.com to sign up for updates, to get information, or you know what? You can tweet me. I'm at D Breckenridge or send me a DM and I'm happy to send you information. Okay, let's dive into our topic today. Finding purpose so that you can have a competitive advantage. What does this mean? <laughs> what does it take? Well, that's where my special guest comes into the conversation. Joining me on the show is Patrice Tanaka. She is the CEO and founder of Joyful Planet. Patrice was actually on the show, um, I guess it was in 2015. She's an author. She was talking about her book, Becoming Ginger Rogers. And today she's going to talk about a book that she contributed to, Performance 360, and all about how business professionals and organizations can find their competitive edge. Patrice is a coach. She's a speaker and she is a mentor. There's so much that I could say about Patrice Tanaka, but it's time she shares her journey with you. Hi, Patrice. Welcome to Women Thank Worldwide. <laughs> Thank you, Deidre. It's so good to be back on your show. It is great to have you back. I'm telling you, time flies. I cannot believe oh God. that it was 2015 when you 2015. were here. May 2015, yes. Unbelievable. It's yeah. Well, it sure does. So Patrice, before we dive into how do you, how does purpose create competitive advantage, maybe you can just share with listeners a little bit of the backstory. Because when you found your purpose, that's when you started Joyful Planet, but you had been a, a PR agency owner <laughs> for a long time. So why did you make that transition? I will. Yes, I had co-founded my first PR and marketing agency, PT and Company, in 1990. And it was a great adventure. However, 12 years later, I was just totally burnt out, exhausted. And exhausted because of the previous 12 years of building an agency with 12 partners and caring for a husband who had been battling a brain tumor for about 16 years at that point. And also, like so many others, uh, fulfilling a lot of obligations to professional and civic organization, friends and family. You know, everywhere I turned, there was someone with a need and a deadline. And I just did not feel that my life was my own. And I actually uh, just could not get out of bed one morning and I realized I needed help. So I went to see an executive coach who was fabulous. Um, and 
she told me that she could help me, but that first I needed to rethink my purpose in life going forward. Now, when I heard that, I was really annoyed because I just finished telling this woman I could barely get out of bed. I didn't have the energy to rethink my purpose for the rest of my life. But she was adamant that, you know, it was a starting point. Unless I could tell her what my purpose in life was, she couldn't help me live that purpose and feel better. So I knew I couldn't get out of it. So over the next two weeks before my next coaching session, I tried to think of a a purpose that made sense to me at that time. And I came back to her two weeks later and said to her, I finally settled on something that rings true. Um, And my purpose was informed by the nearly 3,000 people who died just five months earlier in the uh, in the Twin Towers on 9-11. And I was still in shock and horror, kind of reeling from, you know, that day. And my biggest thought about that day was the people who died, knowing they had only moments left before, you know, their death. And I wondered what they were thinking about in those moments. And I, and I felt that if it were me, I would be trying to convince myself that I had done what was most important and that I was good to go. But I feared that a lot of people were probably not good to go because most people, including myself, do not live as if this might be your last day. So I shared with my coach that my purpose in life was simply to choose joy in my life every day, to be mindful of that joy and to share that joy with others. It was just a simple three-part purpose. Choose joy, be mindful of it, and share it with others. And I felt that if I could live every day in this way, that I could be good to go, no matter how much or little notice I might have before my death. And so immediately my coach asked me, so what brings you joy? And I was kind of shocked because I, of course, nothing at that moment was bringing me joy, um, but I wanted my future to be joy filled. So that's why I chose that purpose. So my coach changed tack. She said, okay, name me one thing that has brought you joy in the past. And before I could even think about what that was, I blurted out, well, I love to dance. And it was so surprising to me because I didn't know where that came from. But in speaking to my coach, I remembered that when I was eight years old, my dream to dance like Ginger Rogers. But between eight years old and 50 years old that I was on the day that I was sharing my purpose with my coach, I, of course, had not taken a dance lesson (laughs) in 42 years. So that became my homework. I had to take a a dance lesson before my next coaching session. And that's how I got into ballroom dancing, which I talked about on uh, your last show. And it really led me down a path I never thought that I would go. Taking up ballroom dancing, getting obsessed, taking more lessons and deciding to compete in ballroom competitions and then realizing and then winning some championships, but then realizing one day, oh, I said that my purpose in life is also to share my joy with others. So how can I share my joy? Oh, I know. I'll write a book. So that's why I wrote Becoming Ginger Rogers, how ballroom dancing made me a happier woman, a better partner, and a smarter CEO. And, and, you know, and it did all of those things, including it helped me to build my business by co-founding two larger mid, mid-sized uh, PR and marketing agencies. And then uh, in 2015, when we last spoke, I decided to leave PR to focus on Uh, my new consultancy, which is called Joyful Planet. And you can see (laughs) the trajectory from choosing joy to, you know, uh, 
how many years later was that? 13 years later, starting Joyful Planet, which is focused on helping individuals and organizations discover and actively live their purpose to unleash greater success, fulfillment, and joy in their personal lives, in their workplaces, and in their communities. And I also wrote two more books, and uh, I realized that I had a lot more joy to share with others. So I got really involved in three nonprofits that are near and dear to my my heart. And one of these is an organization called Dancing Classrooms, which uses the vehicle of ballroom dance, social dance, as a, a way to unleash a social and emotional and cognitive learning in young children. Wow. So it's amazing to me. That's <laughs> just amazing. I like, know. What happens when you find your, your purpose? That's a powerful, mm-hmm. powerful story. Uh, choosing joy is a life changer. It's a, it's a game changer. And, you know, you did mention your other book. So this most recent book, Performance 360, you talk a lot about when you find your purpose, you can have a competitive advantage, whether it's an right. organization or it's a professional. So how is that? Why, right. why does it give you a competitive right. well, advantage? Well, the chapter in that book is called Purpose, a Competitive Advantage in Business and Life. And it might seem a little crass to talk about purpose as a competitive advantage, but I was just trying to come up with a compelling uh, way to get people to have a sense of urgency around discovering and living their purpose, whether as an individual or as an organization. And I do believe that if I had to distill it down to what is the reason people should make some time to discover their life purpose, or if you're an organization, to discover your business purpose. And really what it is, is it's a competitive advantage because knowing your purpose informs every decision that you make going forward. And your purpose is simply how you will leverage your talents, expertise, and your passion in service of other people and our planet. And if you're an organization, uh, a business purpose is all about uh, serving all of your stakeholders, creating value for all of your stakeholders and contributing to the greater good. So it's a very important exercise to figure out what it is that's most important for you to accomplish as an individual or as a business. And if you can articulate that succinctly, it can focus and drive you to accomplish what you say matters most in life. So Patrice, is it harder for an organization to keep everybody focused on the purpose? As a, you know, if you're a, a business owner and, or maybe you have a, a small company, it's, I would think it's a lot easier, but as a company grows, how, how challenging is that? Well, I actually think as a bigger company, you actually, it's more imperative to have one business purpose that everyone, whether you have 10,000 or 50,000 employees, can focus on to help drive the business going forward. And a perfect example of this is the former CEO of Unilever, Paul Pullman, who's one of the rock stars in, in the whole idea of purpose and business purpose and sustainability. He articulated a very simple purpose for Unilever, which was to make sustainable living commonplace. Now, it wasn't a 500-word purpose statement. You know, it was something that was succinct, that everyone could remember, and therefore everyone could focus on to help drive them. So when you think about the simple articulation of business purpose to make sustainable living commonplace, that drives everything, uh, including product innovation. He's not asking for 
incremental improvements. He's looking for products that will really help to make sustainable living commonplace, which means, you know, let's dream big, folks, and come up with our best solution for the planet to make that happen. So in a way, it's even more important for global organizations to have a, 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 a purpose, an, an easy to remember, succinct purpose that can excite and galvanize and focus and drive all employees and that speaks to external stakeholders as well because external stakeholders hearing that Unilever is committed to making sustainable living commonplace um, are very attracted to that proposition and, you know, are more uh, inclined to support a company whose stated business purpose is that rather than a company that's just purely focused on profit. And there's a lot of research showing that purpose-driven um, businesses significantly outperform profit-only focused businesses. So that's another reason that, you know, you see a lot more organizations, a lot more businesses today uh, taking the time to discover and articulate and actively live their purpose. And in fact, there was a watershed moment in business just last week, I think maybe it was a week, two weeks ago, where 181 members of the business roundtable, CEOs of major corporations in the world agreed on you know, a, a document and affix their name to it, talking about the, the statement of purpose of a corporation which is kind of fantastic. Yeah, uh, a, a kind of a watershed era. Now, now this, of course, was uh, many companies, many uh, progressive, uh, forward-thinking um, leaders have been thinking this for a long time. In fact, one of the most interesting uh, studies that I, uh, that I remember seeing a few years ago, there was... Um, they were tracking the um, the increase in public discourse about business purpose, and they noted that between 1995 and 2015, there was a five-fold increase in uh, the public discourse about business slash organizational purpose. But what was really interesting was that two thirds of that increase happened just in the past couple of years. So between 2013 and 2015. So that suggests that we're on, you know, at the very beginning of a huge mega trend in businesses really understanding that they have an obligation, not just to shareholders, but to all stakeholders. And that obligation is to create value for all stakeholders and to contribute to creating um, uh, greater value for, for all people and our planet. So that's a really great, great thing that has happened in, in the business world, I think. I think that's great too. And I have so many more questions to ask you, Patrice. I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts just okay. for a moment. We're going to shift our focus over to the sponsor of today's episode, which is Maple. And that's Maple spelled N-A-Y-P-L-E. And Maple is a full service digital marketing solution. It's kind of a place where you can go online <laughs> to meet digital marketing experts and also have every aspect of your project managed. Now, Maple makes sure that they secure your business interests while they also help you with the marketing management function, making it a lot more pleasant, <laughs> let's put it that way. So what they do is they help you to hire vetted marketing experts, digital marketing experts, while also assuring that everything is running optimally. So you're reaching peak performance. And today for Women Worldwide listeners, Maple has a free ebook that you can go and download. And before I give the details, um, the ebook is 
the 31 questions you would ask if you were going to hire a freelancer or a digital marketing expert. So Patrice, if you were going to hire a digital marketing partner, maybe what's one question that you would ask? Well, you know what, Deidre, I'm going to download that book because <laughs> I think that this new uh, company sounds like a great um, resource for, for individuals and organizations looking for digital marketing support. And I love what you just said. They're not just introducing you to a potential, you know, resource in terms of digital marketing support. They're actually helping you manage the whole process and staying with you, I, I would imagine, through the end of that engagement. And that is really different. And I think that is something really valuable. In fact, I wish that <laughs> they should probably <laughs> offer something like that in the PR industry or in any oh, there you go. <laughs> the advertising industry. Yeah, because what happens if client and agency have disagreement about, you know, the quality of the work. It's always good having a third party. So anyway, that's great for Maple, but I love the concept. Thank you. Thank you for, for offering that. Um, and that's a great suggestion. So I just want to share two questions from this ebook that I thought were really good. And they're both measurement focused. The first is what KPIs are relevant to us? And that's really important because a lot of digital marketing partners will just share KPIs that they think are relevant, but it has to be relevant to the business <coughs> that you're working with so that you can reach higher level goals. And the other is, what is the frequency of the reports that you generate? Because you always want to be evaluating over time and getting results so that you can establish certain trends. So Women Worldwide listeners, you can go to, I'm going to say it first, bit.ly forward slash maple31, and that's spelled B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash M-A-Y-P-L-E 31 to download a copy of the ebook. And when you think about Maple, think simple everything top results and happy experiences. Thank you, Maple, for sponsoring this segment of Women Worldwide. Okay, Patrice, let's dive back into our discussion. So you were just mentioning, you talked about Unilever and how they have a purpose and a very interesting study where two thirds of uh, businesses were recognizing over a shorter period of time, the value of purpose. And you had said something before about the purpose statement. So maybe you could share with listeners, what are the steps to get to purpose? So I'm thinking one of the first steps would be that purpose statement. What else do they have to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a, a brochure on my, on my site. It's actually the chapter from my book, um, uh, the chapter on purpose, a competitive advantage in business and life. And I outline four pretty simple steps to discover your business purpose if you're an organization. And the first step is to identify your organization's greatest strength or differentiator and how you'll leverage it to contribute to the greater good. Okay. The second step is to articulate a succinct but galvanizing statement of purpose that communicates this and how your organization will create value for all stakeholders, not just shareholders. And the third step is to operationalize your purpose because you can't just write your purpose statement and be done with it. It's just not words on a paper. It's how you operationalize that purpose uh, in every area of your business. So it becomes a living, breathing expression of your organization's values. And then finally, you need to communicate your business purple purpose to internal and external stakeholders in an ongoing way so that it does become, you know, a living, breathing approach to business for your organization. And I mean, 
in a nutshell, those are the four steps to discovering and articulating and actively living your purpose. And I believe that if organizations do that, they will unleash greater success and fulfillment and joy, you know. And that's what we want. That, that that's would what be we want. amazing if all of those corporations out there were doing the four steps and really acting upon their purpose far beyond their shareholders, but all stakeholder groups. That would make a difference. Yes, and it's almost the same four steps when it comes to discovering and articulating your own individual life purpose. You need to, one, identify your talent, your greatest talent, your expertise, or your passion that you can leverage to help other people and our planet. The second step is to articulate a succinct but galvanizing statement of purpose that communicates how you will leverage these to accomplish what is most important to you. And the third step is you need to memorize and recite and share your purpose with others as often as possible. And I think I've probably recited and shared my purpose uh, more than 10,000 times since I've, you know, uh, uh, determined that choosing joy and being mindful of, of that joy and sharing that joy with others was my life purpose. Because every time you share your purpose, you have the opportunity to enlist support to achieve what matters most to you, okay? And finally, you need to actively live your purpose. Sometimes I'll have do workshops and I'll ask people, a show of hands, how many people have, you know, gone through the exercise of discovering and articulating their purpose? And, you know, there are hands that go up. And then I'll ask people to share their purpose with us and hands go down. Nobody can remember what the purpose was. They remember doing the exercise. They don't remember what the purpose was. And I have to tell them, people, that purpose, if you cannot remember it, is not working hard in your behalf. No. That's why it's important that it be as succinct as possible so you can memorize it and then you can recite it almost like a mantra like an affirmation to the point where you inhabit that purpose and that and you share your purpose with others easily because you know what it is you remember it and every time you share it it affirms what it is you're focused on doing uh in what in your one very brief and and precious life I love that. So Patrice, you know, yes. finding purpose doesn't make every day easy necessarily. There's still challenges, right? Right. Because even if your purpose is joy, you you right. I'm sure there are days that you're you're still staying focused and true to who you are, but in the spirit of women worldwide, we share challenges. Um so right. perhaps can you share any challenges or something that maybe, I don't want to say takes away your focus, but do, do you face challenges? Of course. And think about it. If you have a purpose that is all about joy and it says to choose joy in my life every day, to be mindful of that joy and to share that joy with others, you are really making yourself accountable to joy. And any time you exhibit unjoyful behavior, <laughs> you get called on it. I feel like get called out. <laughs> yeah, that was all about joy. And my family is the worst at doing this. Anytime, you know, they get upset with me, they're calling me out on the joy thing. <laughs> Yes, I know. It would have been easier if I didn't even put that in a public statement because nobody could call me on it. But I did it purposely because my life prior to articulating that purpose was the opposite of joy. It was unjoy. So that statement was a reminder to myself. Remember, Everything is a choice. I can choose a happier thought. I can choose to do something that brings me joy, or I can choose to do something that doesn't bring me joy. Now, sometimes there are things that 
I want to do that I know will come with moments of extreme frustration and unjoy. But if I feel that by choosing this choice, that ultimately it will be a joyful uh, choice for me and other people. I will make that choice. And again, eyes wide open that there are going to be moments when it's going to be not a joy. <laughs> but ultimately, you know, there is something in it that is joyful or that brings me joy. And that's why I'm choosing that. That's awesome. You talked about choice and right. every choice. So if you choose joy, if you choose to be happy, then it's a compound effect. Then the joy you choose leads to more joy and more joy and more joy, right? Yeah, it's a multiplier effect, right? And plus you also condition or recondition yourself to choose things that you know, bring you joy. And where whatever your choice is, there are other opportunities to choose other things that bring you joy in a place that is already joyful, right? So that's why for me, it's just staying focused and mm -hmm. staying on this path of choosing joy. Because I know that if I keep making those kinds of choices, I'll be on a good path. And I know that I'll be heading towards something that's also joyful, right? Um, Absolutely. So it, it makes life easier, right? Yeah. It, and it really actually um, informs the choice or the choices that I make. And that's why I think that discovering and articulating and actively living your purpose actually makes life and the decisions we make more efficient because you know what it is that's most important for you to achieve. And therefore, the decisions that are in front of you, you choose because it will help you to achieve your overarching purpose in life. Now, if you had no overarching purpose in life, then any choice would be a, a possible good choice. But by making a lot of choices that aren't leading you to achieving your purpose in life, I think it can be very inefficient. And I, right. for most of us in business, we're always looking for what is the most efficient thing we can do to produce the desired result. And to me, that's why I say that discovering and actively living your purpose is the single most powerful and efficient thing we can do to unleash our leadership potential mm -hmm. and greater success, fulfillment, and joy in our personal lives and in our workplaces and in our communities. Because joy as with other, you know, emotions, you know, have a way of affecting and infecting other people, right? It's contagious. Right. So, and people, you're, you're actually drawing people who are like you right. to you. You're attracting the right relationships. And also, I don't want to spread unjoy, right? right. <laughs> exactly. I'm responsible and not be sh spreading that contagion. So I want to make sure that what I share and what I spread is joy. That's great. And I can't even believe it. We're, we're at the part of the show where you get to offer advice. <laughs> you get to round out this whole discussion. Patrice, what, what's some parting advice to Women Worldwide listeners? Well, you know, I thought about being a coach, but I realized that really what I'm trying to do is to get as many of our 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet to discover and actively live my purpose. So I'm very focused on people and organizations should discover, should discover and actively live their purpose because that is the best thing they can do for themselves and for other people and our planet. And in fact, that's why my consultancy is called Joyful Planet because if everyone were actively living their life purpose, they would be unleashing greater joy in the planet. 
That's wonderful. And Patrice, last question, super easy. Where can people find out more about you and Joyful Planet? Oh, thank you. Well, my website, joyfulplanet.com, and you can email me, patrice at joyfulplanet.com, or find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Sambagal. <laughs> Homage to my ballroom dancing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. So, you know, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> You're out there spreading joy. <laughs> and in fact, my tweets on Twitter, when I first started Twitter in, I don't know, 2007, I decided that I want to make sure that what I share is joyful. So I have, I call them joy tweets. So every tweet I start out with joy tweet, because I want to give a heads up that <laughs> I'm not going to be sharing bad news with, with right. <laughs> not like everybody else. You are true <laughs> to your purpose. <laughs> well, Patrice, thank you so much for coming back on Women Worldwide and for sharing all about purpose, how to get there, really what it means for a business or a professional. So, thank you for all of your advice and your tips. And thank you for all of the great ways that you're helping to create a more joyful planet. Oh. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. And I want to thank all of you Women Worldwide listeners for showing up, tuning in. I know you're listening on iTunes and you're on YouTube watching us. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, you should subscribe to the Deirdre Breckenridge channel. And be sure to keep the feedback coming. Tweet us. Uh, we're on Facebook. Share your comments there. You can sign up for Women Worldwide updates at womenworldwideshow.com. Rate us on iTunes. We always love to hear your feedback. So thank you, friends. And until our next episode, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you. <laughs> Great. <laughs>